More so than any other movie category, horror thrives on the sheer multitude of subgenres which exist within it, from slasher films to monster movies, haunted house flicks to found footage fare and everything in between. And one of the most prominent subgenres is, of course, the vampire movie, popularised by the 1922 classic Nosferatu, itself an unauthorised adaptation of the one and only Dracula. In the century since, vampires have laid claim to hundreds of efforts, ranging from breathlessly unique to forgettably generic in all of their fanged frivolities. So, with all of this batty content, the core tenets of the vampire movie are so well trodden by this point that it's a cause for celebration when any movie manages to carve out a unique niche for itself. These ten films, whether masterpieces of their genre or flawed curios, at least all dared to do something different with the vampire film, contorting it in some wholly different, and in some cases, quite divisive directions. Let's take a look then, shall we? I am the blood donor Ash from What Culture Horror, and these are 10 vampire movies that broke all the rules. 10. What We Do in the Shadows By 2014, it's fair to say that the post-Twilight vampire movie resurgence felt thoroughly played out. So trust Taika Waititi to breathe fresh new life into it by way of a hilariously off-the-wall vampire mockumentary. What We Do in the Shadows follows a quartet of vampires living together in a flat in New Zealand, as they attempt to find contentment whilst also keeping themselves fed. Watiti does a fantastic job mining huge laughs from the sheer culture clash of these crusty old vampires living out their long lives in modern-day Wellington. While his impressive eye for technically complex sight gags ensures every penny of the film's $1.6 million budget ends up on the screen. Brilliantly, the film not only passes wink-wink comment on the mouldiness of the vampire genre, but also offers up one of the most subversive and expectation-defying mockumentaries of all time. The FX spin-off series of the same name is also well worth your time, though we are sadly still waiting for the already announced, excellently titled movie sequel, We're Wolves. 9. Let the Right One In Aptly released mere weeks before the first Twilight film, Let the Right One In couldn't be more different. A slow, quiet, intensely atmospheric, character-driven horror romance that actively tries to be anything but a conventional vampire flick. Focused on the burgeoning relationship between despondent 12-year-old Oscar and vampire child Ellie, this supremely chilly effort from Thomas Alfredson adapts the 2004 novel with impeccable patience and sublime filmmaking skill. Rarely has the genre offered up a more hauntingly tragic depiction of vampirism, with Ellie simultaneously locked in the body of a youngster whilst forced to feed on the blood of innocence to survive. Wrapping this around a childhood romance makes for a vampire film like no other, that's brilliantly acted, soulful, and absolutely beautiful to behold in even its more disturbing moments. Matt Reeves' 2010 remake, Let Me In, is also an uncommonly effective retelling with just enough changes to the material to stand on its own, too. 8. Vampire's Kiss there's no vampire movie quite like Vampire's Kiss, a 1989 black comedy horror starring the inimitable Nicolas Cage as a literary critic who, after a late-night encounter with a woman, comes to believe he's turning into a vampire. The uniqueness of this film lies in its ambiguity, given that the audience is never quite sure whether or not Peter is indeed becoming a vampire, or if we're merely witnessing a man in the midst of a mental health emergency. Or perhaps the truth is a twisted combination of the two. Either way, Cage gives one of his most distinctive, that is, batch insane, performances of his entire career, swinging wildly for the fences in every possible direction, ensuring there is never a dull moment to be found. A fanged, proto-version of American Psycho, Vampire's Kiss may be willfully nasty and undeniably rough around the edges, but Cage's wonderfully unrestrained work begs to be seen and celebrated. 7. Near Dark Two decades before Catherine Bigelow became the first, and to date only woman to win the Best Director Oscar for The Hurt Locker, she helmed this endlessly creative vampire western, following a group of travelling vampires who bring a reluctant new recruit into their clan. Both stylistically and thematically, Near Dark is a true original, stripping away the varnish associated with the vampire genre throughout the 1980s, replaced here with a grungy yet gorgeous aesthetic. Not to forget a killer Tangerine Dream score. It's also a uniquely tragic examination of the vampire horde as a twisted makeshift family. A rarer, cool 80s movie which can still be taken completely seriously today, Near Dark matches its pulpy thrills with some genuinely thoughtful observations about the spiritual toll of eternal life. 6. Daybreakers Daybreakers, for its flaws, is an undeniable true original, taking place in a future where most of humanity has been transformed into vampires by a plague. 
Those few humans who remain are hunted to be harvested for blood, while the increasingly starving vampire population is progressively transforming into rabid subsiders, as hematologist Edward Dalton attempts to develop a blood substitute. The Spearig brothers do a fantastic job of aggressively reconfiguring classical aspects of vampire lore, offering up a totally fresh take on a tired genre in the process. It is also beautifully shot, with strong performances from Ethan Hawke, Willem Dafoe as a crossbow-wielding former vampire, and Sam Neill as a scenery-chewing blood manufacturer. What more could you want here? It's a shame we never got to see more from this world, whether by way of a sequel or a TV spin-off, because its alluringly singular mythology begs for deeper exploration. 5. Twilight Before you grab a pitchfork, listen to these two words. Sparkling vampires. You needn't like or even basically respect the Twilight franchise to accept that the series revitalized the genre's flagging commercial viability, reimagined here as a lusty, teen-skewing romantic fantasy. Counter to traditional genre lore, the vampires in Twilight have reflections and shadows, aren't harmed by garlic, and most controversially of all, don't burn up when exposed to sunlight, but rather glisten like diamonds. When you throw in a hormone-soaked central performance between human Bella and brooding vamp Edward, it creates a recipe for an uneven yet entirely special vampire movie, one that's urgently contemporary both for better and often for worse. Goofy as hell yet taking itself oddly seriously, the first Twilight at least captures the teenage drama of its source material, even if it ushered in an exhausting era of Hollywood buying up every hit young adult novel franchise in existence. It may have made everyone sick of vampire movies for a good five years or so, but its influence is undeniable. 4. The Hunger If there's any film on this list which desperately deserves more eyes on it, it is surely Tony Scott's 1983 directorial debut, The Hunger. Perhaps the sexiest vampire film ever made, The Hunger focuses on the love triangle between an ancient vampire, her companion, and a scientist studying the effects of aging. Scott's film isn't just beautifully filmed and set to a killer soundtrack, including an unforgettable opening rendition of Bauhaus's Bela Lugosi's Dead, but also one of the most thematically striking entries into the genre. Exploring the weighty existential toll hundreds of years of life will take on a person, the hunger deglamorizes the notion of immortality in a deeply terrifying way, exemplified by incredible performances from its central trio as well as some outstanding makeup effects. Every frame of this film oozes atmosphere, and while its slow pace and more character-driven narrative won't be for everyone, it is one of the most visionary efforts the genre has ever seen. 3. Only Lovers Left Alive A vampire film from Jim Jarmusch was always going to be something special, and much like The Hunger, Only Lovers Left Alive focuses less on the joys of eternal life and more on the utter boredom which would eventually set in. Tilda Swinton and Tom Hiddleston are terrific as a centuries-married vampire couple who must continually adapt to living in the modern world, or in the case of Hiddleston's Adam, just fiercely resent it. Largely bereft of gory action, Jermush's film instead invests entirely in its unique characters, with a sharp script which captures the essence of the human condition no matter its heightened premise. Rarely has the vampire film engaged so cleverly and so playfully with real-world history, offering up one of the more convincing and believable modern entries into the genre. 2. Bram Stoker's Dracula What could honestly be bolder or more transgressive than casting Keanu Reeves to play an English solicitor? Jokes aside, Francis Ford Coppola's gothic horror is one of the most stylistically accomplished vampire films of all time, a work of such visual daring that it basically becomes a quasi-abstract experiment in what the director could actually get away with. Yes, it's messy and overlong and undisciplined, and Reeves and Monona Ryder's accents are iffy to say the least. But it's also a fearless and sumptuous rendition of Stoker's classic tale, a hearty, rich meal of a movie which begs the viewer to bathe in every single frame. Even almost 30 years later, it is a blistering technical marvel, albeit one best brought to life by Gary Oldman's thermonuclear performance as Count Dracula. Tap dancing in that grey area between moody self-seriousness and gopher-broke absurdity, Coppola's Dracula is a true rarity among the genre, a muscular, deeply felt vampire flick with a blockbuster budget to match. 1. Shadow of the Vampire And finally, there's perhaps no more creative or meta-entry into the genre than 2000's Shadow of the Vampire, which posits that F.W. Murnau's iconic 1922 vampire classic Nosferatu was less of a fiction than anyone ever expected. Willem Dafoe received a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination for his performance as Max Schreck, the actor who played Count Orlok in Murnau's movie, who here is implied to be an actual vampire. Yup. 
It's clear that such a bravura, revisionist concept could have easily been a complete disaster. But thanks to a script and direction which strike an expert balance between horror and comedy, Shadow of the Vampire is an affectionate, speculative reinterpretation of a legendary piece of movie history. John Markovich is also fantastic here as the embattled filmmaker Murnau, though it is ultimately Defoe whose pitch-perfect turn as Shrek makes the film such a twisted, ridiculous delight. And that's our list. Which of these vampire movies gives you the taste for blood? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash over on social media at Ash Millman, and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back again soon for some more spine-tingling horror content. Thanks for watching.